I thought you was going to say one of the stories for like one of my birthdays too. But we go we go leave that alone. We go leave that alone. We I was going to get to that. I'm going to tell that story actually. So Okay. I know my <laughs> freshman initiation was like it wasn't like a thing they set up, but I, I know I, I had some rough nights out with, 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 with some of those guys and like just not used to it. So I felt like it was just only right for me to do the same for y'all. Right. Yeah. But when it was when it was every one of y'all birthday, y'all knew who to call. Y'all knew who we were right. going. That's a fact. You and Ben. <laughs> but you specifically. Yeah. I just happened to be in the, in the store that day, and the only thing they had was Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I knew, I knew the night, I knew the night was gonna get yeah. tricky. I yeah. just didn't know when. Yeah. Hey, what's up? My name is Rodney Cooper. I'm the host of Locker Room Talk with Coop. I got another great guest that's coming in for you guys. I got my guy, my bro, Troy Rutherford, aka T. Relly, one of Alabama greats. Coming out of high school, he was a four-star recruit and he decided to play for the University of Alabama. And as you guys know, once he stepped foot on campus, he put up crazy stats. He was first team all SEC. SEC All Defensive Team, SEC All Rookie Team, as well as being fourth all time in scoring in Bama history, and being first all time in steals in Bama history, as well as being fifth all time in steals in SEC history, which is crazy. But me and T. Relly, man, we had a great conversation. We talked about his story, we talked about memorable moments, and we also talked about funny moments that we probably shouldn't have talked about, but it is what it is. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And guys. Make sure that you guys like, comment, share this video with somebody you think will enjoy it. And also hit that red button, those red letters that says subscribe for your boy if you're enjoying the show. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. So let's get it. So we got my guy, Trevor Relford. AKA T Relly on the show. What's up, bro? Welcome to the show. What's good, bro? Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. No doubt. So let's jump right into it, man. So let the people know your story as far as you being a kid from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. You know, you got the KC hat, playing high school ball at Bishop Me Age, up until the point you decided to play for the University of Alabama. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you know, I mean, everywhere I go, I try to, you know, let people know that, you know, I'm from Kansas City. So, Right. Uh, that that place got a lot to do with, you know, the reason for me getting to Alabama and and being able to see the things that you know I haven't in, in my life so far. But right, I mean, just playing on Tar Heels, growing up there, watching my my oldest brother play, and, mm. and then things like that, and also following him out to to Bishop Meade's where I play high school at, right, was kind of the start of everything because I mean it started with him. He he went to KU and then once he left, mm. the ball was in my court. So right, I, I was there with pretty much all my best friends and. You know, we went, we went to state this uh, my junior year undefeated, we, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And we lost, uh, we lost on a buzzer beater, which was tough because that was our, that was our only Dang. loss that year. And then I played football too. My that my junior year is when I started. So I played, I played in that, and we, and we lost. I came back to our senior year, and we like we went in both sports. Mm. And football season started. Um, it went good. You know, we. Uh, we, we, we had a lot of big teams in our league, but once yeah. we actually got to state, we started playing 4A teams. So okay. once we knew we got by, I forget the name of the team, but once we got by them, we knew like, all right, we, we got a good chance of winning, winning the state title in football. So once we did that, that just carried on to basketball, which we went right. undefeated. Right. And 25 and no. So you got you got to put a stamp on our name. When, when, you, yeah. when you talk about basketball in Kansas. That was the go. Okay, good. yeah. Yeah, we just – and it was just – it, it kind of was like, I wouldn't say a LeBron James type story. Oh, my God. Here, wow. <laughs> here we go. Only, only here thing, we go. So, basically, so basically you're saying y'all need a documentary, basically. I mean, basically, we all played together since we was <laughs> we was like 10 years old. Yo. So, we all somehow get back to, to uh, high school and, and team – well, not team up, but we yeah. all just came – was was able to, to uh, play our senior year together at MEA and we went 25 and 0. Like, That's and, different, and, and that was big. We we were one of the highest. Um, the we was in five A. Yeah. Which I mean, we played all the six A teams in our league, which we won that. Right. So I, I felt like we just that was that was real dominant. And then just going into Alabama, you know, yeah. I never thought that I'd be going from Kansas City, Missouri to to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. But 
Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's yeah. two different worlds, man. Like, what made you want to come down south? And was you nervous about coming down south, or what was, what was that like? I mean, I, I would say I would say I was kind of nervous just because, yeah. like, all the stereotypes right. and, like, Thanks. all the, the different things you hear, like, you going yeah. out to the south and, like, and not just only that, it was like, yo, Alabama really wasn't a basketball school. Thanks. So, yeah. for me, that was just, that was even more reason to go there because I've always been the type that, you know, just had a chip on my shoulder and, and just wanted right. to prove everybody wrong and didn't necessarily want to team up with, with everybody. I like I like going after the top dogs and playing against them and, and right. seeing where we where we stand at the end. So yeah. that, that I also played a big point, a, a big reason to me coming to Alabama. Yeah. So I know it's crazy because me and you, we uh we both carry that chip on our shoulders. I know, you know, me and you, the, the first time I met you was when uh, at the Alabama Elite Camp. But we're going to talk about that, though. We're going to talk about how we gave everybody <laughs> buckets. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> But uh, yeah, you so just that dumb strong. I'm like, God, leave this strong in high school. <laughs> so man, so yeah, so like you was talking about with your older brother, you know, Travis Rutherford for the people, um, out there, he played with the Kansas, you know, Kansas Jayhawks, and uh, which y'all been, you know, a year and a half, two years apart, and uh, both of y'all, you know, doing things that a smaller percentage of people get to do and doing it at the high level. Uh, talk about that in y'all relationship, you know, growing up with sports. I mean that's I mean that's my favorite player. Like you can you can ask You always you know, say that everybody. that's a fact, yeah. <laughs> I mean any that's yeah. with anybody still to this day, like he right. played against somebody, he probably played the basketball for months. Like I'm taking him. <laughs> that's that's who that's who I mean from where I'm from, that's who I seen like I mean, do it and right. you know, make it out of where we from and uh you know, get, go to Mia's, you know, bring some more, you know, hype to that school, even though they had some, we had some guys that went there before us that also came from the inner city, but right. just, I, I I think just our, our bond is what helped me, you know, come to college and, and I feel mm. like be ready from day one. Cause I got to see him go through adversity mm. with going to KU and being around five stars that come in every year and he, right. him not kind of have to wait his turn, but still be ready when it, when it, when it was his time. And, right. and that I think just helped me out a lot. And, I mean, that was, he just always been my biggest motivation, so. Mm, I got you. Yeah. And it's crazy because I always talk about like on all the different shows, you know, exposure leads to expansion. So I tell the parents all the time, like as far as with the kids, like they got to see an example, like that's been the shoes that they they, they trying to get to. And, that, and with you, it was your brother, you know, all the adversity you've been through, you been able to ask them questions on certain things and stuff like that. But 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 that's dope, man, as far as your relationship. And I can. Definitely attest to that as far as in, in, in school, you used to always talk about uh Travis, man, as far as him being the GOAT and, you know, he, him yeah. being a dog and stuff like that. But but like you was talking about, man, as far as in your story with football, man, man I was doing research on you. I ain't know you played football, football like that, nah. But, uh, yeah. but like y'all, like you saying, y'all had one for a state championship and stuff like that. And uh, just looking at it, it looked like you played every position. Man, you played wide receiver, running back, special team. You played defense, too. I'm like, bro, hold up, bro. What's going on? I cannot hey, see hey, you, bro, running routes. I'll be crying left. I could not see you, it, bro. I, I didn't drop. I didn't. Like, if you ask, ask our quarterback, I didn't yeah. drop much. The routes <laughs> wasn't. I, I wouldn't say my routes was like uh, Devontae Smith or, okay. yeah. like, you know, like That's somebody me. like that. Or, yeah. But. I got the job done, and I, I felt like I was the first down. I felt like I was a first down guy. I wasn't too explosive to, to you okay. know, to take it all away. But I get you a good first down. Wes Walker, that's that's the type. Wes Walker, I was thinking him. I was thinking. Was thinking him. <laughs> hey, yeah. so so the question is, the question is that I want to know. Okay, did y'all play anybody good? And as far as you know, as far as with you, what position you think you was best at on the field? You said did we play anybody good? I don't know, man. I, I know you running routes and you playing defense. What you was DB too? Hey man, I, hey listen, I understand the University of Alabama is in uh <laughs> you know it's here, but like don't get it too. Like we, we play football in, in Missouri uh, and Kansas. We play okay. we I get that too. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't worry, don't look at Mizzou in the SEC and think <laughs> that that's how football is played there. It's, it's not. Okay, so we got we got to get some tape, man. We go get some tape. See what's going on. Oh yeah, look look uh, on YouTube. I'm there. I'm. I, hey, I actually took yeah. a couple back to the house. So <laughs> I, had a, I had a little burst. What you what you running the forty? I never really did an official, uh, but I think it would have been like a four 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 three man. <laughs> four three good day. I got. You. So what you think was your best position on the field though? I, I like safety. Safety. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I got I played cornerback one time, and I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I realized that that was a real island because <laughs> the dude they just they threw it to him one time. I'm like, yeah, you ain't coming back to you again. Yeah, he kept throwing it to him. Yeah. Next thing I know, he started getting touched down, touched down. I'm like, oh, yeah, it, this is real. It's real. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just me and him. Yeah, me right. And him right now, he's yeah. the best of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, who would you compare yourself to at the uh, at the safety spot then? As far as a, a, a former, a former current Bama guy, who would you say? You said like a, a, a former Bama guy, former current Bama or a pro guy. We'll go, we'll go there. Since you like to be extreme with stuff, we'll go there. <laughs> Dang, but like this, like he, I don't think he put he in play safety. Go. Here we go. But like I really had to cover. I really had the ability, like Javier Arenas, <laughs> like <laughs> that's who I say I was like, you know. Oh man, this man's then a fool, receiver, man. Then a receiver, a okay. receiver, I was like, out of, the, out of the big group that just left with Devontae and all them. Yeah. I would be more like Devontae, because like. Okay. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't really that big at that yeah. position, but yeah. like, I caught everything. So like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I got you. And my best friend, he was the best So basically you've been player of the year if you were to play in the SEC. If you play in the SEC, you basically been player of the year, basically. See, now you capping. See, listen. <laughs> no, I'm just going off what you're saying. I'm just... But like, serious, on a serious note, I yeah. was real, I was like, I would say between Oklahoma and Alabama, I almost committed to Oklahoma because play they, offered it, they offered it and let me play both. Okay. Even though I think that was just stoops at the time, just trying to find a way to get my best friend there and me there for basketball, but right. I mean, I got offers in, in big, from Big 12 schools in football, so like, it and wasn't- that's no, no, And that's no cap? Oh, that, that's that's okay. facts. It's on the internet. That's certified. Yeah. Okay. That's certified. <laughs> I got Favorite you. Favorite notes. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't one of the, it, was, it wasn't one of them mail eyes you just get. Just, ah, you know, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Handwritten. Handwritten. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, with you with you being a top recruit coming out of high school, man, who's your um, top five? And uh, what gave Bama the edge over the other schools? My top five coming out was Oklahoma, Tennessee, Bruce Pearl was there at Tennessee, uh, mm-hmm. Alabama, and no, everybody, I think everybody knows now, but like only really Alabama really came into the picture because yeah. my brother the year before played, well, when he was in high school, he played with uh, Coach Grant on the USA team. Mm, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. So he was a coach on there, and, and like I just knew of him through that. You know, my brother always had good things to say about him, you know. Right. He was quiet, but you know, he had good things to say about him. And I was just like, when I came on my right. visit, I knew I wanted to play for him, so it was mm. it wasn't it was like a no brainer. But I had UCLA too, and that was just more so like, you know, it's tough to get in those like LA schools and things like that. And I just right, had right. some stuff I had to wait on to get get qualified and get clear, and then you know, kind of make my decision. And they kind of mm. was looking at somebody else and back and forth, kind of just waiting to see what, what happened with me. But who was the last one? I think it was. Alabama, Tennessee, Oklahoma, UCLA, yeah, and who was and I and I, I would say I would say Kansas, but I just knew with everybody they had coming in there, right? That it was probably the situation where I had to sit mm. at the beginning, but not knowing how Josh Selby's situation was, it probably could have been different, right? But that was, I would say that was just my my schools, and that's a that's even a lesson. Though, even though everybody don't know this, yeah. That before I got any of those big schools, like I was set on playing in Missouri State for Quanzo Martin, but then mm, he, okay, yeah, because I, I that's where I was. I took all my visits. I used to go up there for unofficial, just watch games when they had who Kyle was Quanzo, who he was with when uh, when we was hooping. He had what uh, school he was at after Missouri he had, State, he went to Tennessee, he, Tennessee, he started yeah, coaching yeah, Tennessee. yeah, yeah. So, like, he was in Missouri State, and then I, I want to say he left like a year after I got to school and went to Tennessee, yeah. And then he was at Cal, and then he was, and then I think back at Mizzou or, or wherever he was at, but yeah, that's the one dude I always wanted to, to, to play for, and like, mm. just super cool, right? And just relate to you on every level, but I, I was. I was I was like set on going to Missouri State and playing for him for like right. the longest time. So. Man, just watch just watch his interviews, bro. Like he seemed like a real cool dude, man. Just I ain't I ain't never met him and stuff like that. But of course we played against him or whatever. But 
he did seem like a cool dude just in the interviews and seeing how he like connect with his players and stuff like that too. So, but uh, but with you coming on the campus, man, you know your route was a was a little bit different. You know, Coach Grant, you know he pretty much gave you the keys, you know, to lead the team as far as at the point guard position. So, what was the biggest transition for you? You know, going from high school to playing college ball. I think the biggest the biggest thing for me um, from high school to uh, to college was just like trying to trying to find a way to just bring it like every day. Right. I feel like in, in, when you're in high school, it's it's just a way to that certain teams you play against, certain guys they just not really up to your skill level. Thanks. Or yeah. you know what I mean, you can kind of take days. You, you can take days off, but right once you get out to college, everybody can play your level, even at the, especially right. at the pros. But like every everybody is strong, everybody fast. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? They they going they got the same the same like access to gyms as you do right. so everybody is, is you know is developing it and getting better so i think my approach is just like the biggest thing was just kind of taking it like every day was like a day to get better and right. whoever whoever i was going against i was going to compete whenever i stepped on that floor that was just like the the, the, the i say the biggest transition mm. and i'd be talking about it all the time i said man once you get to the d1 level like once you start playing pickup and the practice and stuff like that it's, it's like Everybody on the team was their best player on the uh, on that high school team. So I said sometimes, yeah. like you say, everybody fast, everybody athletic, everybody strong. I said sometimes it kind of almost like you seeing your twin, like everything that you yeah. thought you could, like you could get away with in high school, like that's, that's dead in college. Like mm-hmm. you got it, <laughs> it's dead. Man, you already know some of them practices we had. Man, I'm talking about, I'm like, and people and, and and people disrespect this guy I'm about to say, but like Ben, Ben, yeah, lock up, like lock, we we'll lock up. Well, lock up, going bro. Going against them every yeah. day, yeah. And then, and then not even that. Just imagine coming to my freshman year, and I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going against these dudes in high school, right? And you know, physicality got nothing to do with it. It's just right. like I'm, I'm talented, you know. what I'm saying like, I can, I can find a way to figure out on the court. But going against right. scenario Hillman, yeah. My freshman year, I'm like, yo, this is. Who, who they is said this he was guy? different, bro. I know his bounce is crazy. But they say I don't care what crossover, what kind of moves you that's got. That's what I'm t- I heard he was locking up. <laughs> and ain't none of that flying with him. And, and I just think that, like, guys that we had on that team was just, like, a little bit too early. Because, like, right, we right. had some dogs. Yeah. And, and, and scenario, the things he can do on the court, people get praised for that now. Right, facts. You talking about hustle stats, hard hat, right. whatever that, all them numbers. They was before they time. on that every week. So I'm just like, yo. And now they paying guys like, like that. Like now they paying guys like that top dollar. <laughs> ain't got to score a point. <laughs> Facts. But, Facts. But I mean, it is, it is what it is, though. Right, right. So, bro, with you, when I was looking at your your stats, man, you pretty much, you know, you top ten in almost in pretty much every category except for rebounding. So, you know, you being fourth all time in scoring in um in Bama history. You being first all time in, in steals, I um, in Bama history, and being fifth all time in SEC history, which is which is crazy. Uh, so for the younger generation that's you know going to be watching this, uh, talk about your work ethic and the mindset that you have to have uh, to be able to you know to accomplish some things like that. I mean, I think I think just you know the guys I was I bro. able to like you was watch. different. Like dudes be sleeping on you, bro. You was different. Like it was crazy. But go ahead though. But go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate it too. But like, I think just it was just the what I did in, in school yeah. was just like, okay, people say, oh yeah, he scored points. He did, he did X, Y, and Z, and, and I just feel like that I was just give just taking what the you know the defense was giving me. Facts. You know what I mean? I know and I you, put the and work. You was in, giving it to him was, too. <laughs> you was giving it to yeah. him. Yeah, straight up. Pause, pause, pause. Right, right. We pause, pause. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I was, <laughs> I was just, I was around guys like Teron Lou, like, mm. um, like all these guys in the summertime when I'm working out, and yeah. these are like, not, these are scoring guards. So like, right. I knew, I knew that once I kind of got stronger and the game slowed down for me, I knew the points would come and, and things like that. So, right. I, I just, I just feel like, man, if you just, you just kind of watch film, and I wasn't a big film guy, but I did right. it when it was necessary mm. and like. I wasn't an everyday guy, but like it'd be sometimes right. where somebody back home would see me a video. I'm like, yo, watch this and, and do that. Or mm. yeah, I just had a bad game and I like it'd take whatever just to sit through it and watch yeah. it at the house by myself. Right. Because, you know, everybody want to watch the good games. Right. Facts. Bad, but Facts. I used to watch. Yeah. And, and for me, it was like, 
I, I couldn't let one game go to two, you know. Right. So right. if I did have a bad one, I was just itching to get back to that next one. And, and mm. I think that's kind of what was like a big part of my like individual success at Alabama. I just ne- I just was always ready just for the next game, I guess. Right, right. So basically what you was doing was you was learning from your mistakes and the mistakes that you did, like see through film and stuff like that, you just didn't let that compound and transition over into the next game, which is which is definitely a lesson within itself. And I know just just personally, man, just watching you, like you didn't bag down from no like no no competition like at all. Like you wanted you wanted all the smoke. I know it's some stuff I can't say on here, but I definitely remember a specific moment we played Kentucky. And we was playing to get Marquise Teague. And y'all yeah. was talking crazy. Like y'all was talking crazy. Yeah. I don't know if y'all had some history. I don't know what was going on, but y'all was talking crazy. We we just we gonna leave nah, it alone. I mean, we're gonna leave it alone. That's right. Yeah, we can talk about it because I remember yeah. that game. That was, yeah. and I always like those games because even when right. I see them guys now, we laugh and joke about it because we yeah. just competing. Right. We just yeah. competing then, but it's like if if me being a point guard and I come out there and y'all watching me and 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 I'm like I'm not ready or I'm locked in. I see that now how it can play an effect. Right, facts. I'm like affect y'all going throughout the game. But like my thing was just like I was just so ready to play against all them top dudes. That yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you let it get the best of you in the game. You right, right, like, right. Not necessarily you got to match your point for point, but I'm like, I just don't want this dude to have a. Now, I know, I know. You had that when you had that look. When you had that look and lock in. I already know it's how I, I I need to just crash the yeah. glass because I already know what type of it. When you start going, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I already know what it is. Listening to this, like we got to talk about, you know, the Georgia game at home. You know, I was I was in the game too. You know, you hit the buzzer beat at half court, and the gym went crazy. You know, so so talk about that game, man, and give yeah. the people like an inside scoop on you know the play before that when we had to you know lock up and get a stop and just the, just the game in general. Yeah, I mean that that game was crazy because crazy, I, I bro. It, now, it was crazy. I promise, I promise that any other game we've been in, they would have called that foul at the end. <laughs> right, right. I don't know how it was in a block or a charge or something. Something. So he right. get the ball. He get the ball, and this is funny too because you in the play. Okay, I just wanted to make I sure I, I, I was go, I was gonna see if you go throw me in there, but go ahead. Okay, yeah, appreciate it. You yeah. in the play? Yeah. So I think. I, I think you felt like the ball was supposed to come to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if, if I'm not mean? mistaken, it's somebody on me. I don't know if it's Shannon or it's you or it, I forget who it was, but yeah. it was one of y'all. I gave you the ball, bro. I feel like I had that hands up, huh? I gave you the ball, bro. But you, yeah. Wait a minute. So Nick, so Nick Jacobs like took like a charge, and somehow the yeah. ball just came out, and it came in my hands. So I feel like I should have took the shot, but two was hot. But took a couple of dribbles. That's what it was. That's what yeah. it was. I don't ball up too, man. I was open. I was like, yo, I'm gonna hit this shit. Get yeah, yeah, ball. right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks. It was crazy. It was crazy, bro. And the gym went crazy. And it's like when you when you shot it, it's like you was following it like in. I'm like, dang, this about to go in, bro. It was all net, which is crazy. It was all net, bro. That was wild. That was wild. Honestly, bro, I think that shot was going in, and Lace is running down there at the same time, yeah. and Lace is running to the bench because I know he don't think it's going in. And if you see Lace, he runs to the bench to the yeah. left, and they hit a quick right once it go in. Because <laughs> I'm just, I'm just following the shot. Yeah, yeah. It looked like he was on target, but I didn't know. I didn't think it right. had a chance. And I'm right. like, I see Lace running after me, so I not take off. And yeah. then I forget who we knocked down over there. But <laughs> that that whole game was just like. It was crazy. I mean, everything. It, I always had the most like things like that happen for me at, at, at Alabama. So I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I guess I don't know. You got the juice, it bro. It was just a you got the juice, bro. It was a hundred year anniversary. I just, I think he just yeah, wouldn't let us go out like it was. that. So. Right, right. He so, was uh, yeah, that was a crazy moments, man. So for the people out there, man, me and T really go way back. Like we talked about, as far as on uh, the first time I met, really was at the uh, Alabama League Camp. And for everybody out there, we went undefeated. We gave everybody buckets. Uh, but, but talk about as far as, uh, when you first met me and also talk about either a game or a couple of games that me and you both went off in a game. Yeah, honestly, bro, the first time I met you, I'm like, yo, what they down here eating? 
<laughs> but everything, everything you did, every move you did on the court, I'm like, God, this dude is strong. Like just <laughs> like you just did push ups before camp. Like every day before camp, you just come in and knock out a hundred. Like, hey, shout out Hurstbury, Alabama, man. Playing outside on the courts, man. Playing against all yeah, old heads, OGs. <laughs> yeah, they're doing prison work outside there. <laughs> oh man. yeah, nah, it was. I, I think yeah, that was the, that was the first time I met you in. Uh, and yeah, you was hooping. I never mm. thought at that time that we would be on. You know what I'm saying? That, that we'd be at Bama together. Or right. Anything, yeah. Like, not like you wasn't gonna go there or anything like that. I felt right. like I was just there. Yeah, it just like a camp just to get my name out there because people were still sleeping on me. Fact. So I feel like when I came both to that camp, yeah. yeah. So when I feel like we came to that camp, that kind of put us both out there because Bam ain't right. offering me at that time. Not yeah. like a, not like a. Okay, yeah, yeah, we want you. It right. wasn't like that because Casey Ross Miller was there too. Yeah, Casey, uh, and Casey was, from uh, Texas, uh, Texas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I played against him all the time. Every every championship I was a part of growing up. Right. We played against his team, so right. it was just funny that like we was at that camp competing for that same, that same job. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that yeah. same Opportunity, but right. I feel like yeah, that's that's the first time I met you, and uh, yeah, you was hooping, and, and you know, even even like what I respected so much about y'all whole class when y'all first came in, yeah. that y'all was just ready to go. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Y'all was yeah. like, yeah, we're gonna change this and. And, and do X, Y, and Z, which we know that's where the program needed to go. Right. But I just, I, oh, and I tell, I tell people I talk about this now, I was like, if that team, if we would have just came, to, like, kind of came together at, right. at, a, yeah. at the beginning, because we went to the tournament, but we had so many problems. People don't know. Yeah, fact. Like, <laughs> like, like, I be talking about that too, bro. Team. If people can see our, like, pickups and our practice, like, look at the squad, bro. Me, you, me, you, Levi, uh, Lace, J Mike. Yeah. T Mitch, like man, it was crazy. Yeah, Rid Ridden, a boss whole freshman class and go five against our five, and man, and that's how we were just battling. Yeah, but yeah. we was all, I feel like we was all just competitive. So mm -hmm. it's like, all right, we we got we got these guys who we just came. We almost won the SEC freshman year, right? Yeah, when, when we was getting smacked in the preseason. Then we come back, y'all right. come in, y'all got the best class to come into Alabama, right? And, and, and y'all can go five strong and, and <laughs> right. play pickup. Yeah. So it was just, it was just like trying to just like channel like, uh, you know, like the competitive side, but just knowing we all on the same on the same team. Right, but like, right. I, I it was some, it was, it was like some disagreements out there. Like we was doing this instead yeah. of doing this at times, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Yeah. but nah, I re I respect it though because we was competitive yeah. and like, yeah, yeah we, we it didn't equate to like you know what I'm saying it's, it's more wins than we thought, but like people knew when they played us, we they was going. They was getting some dogs. Like right. we just, we just need to score some more. <laughs> mm, facts, facts. I always say, man, if we had that same squad with with Oates like um system as far as offensively, oh my god, it would have been, it would have been crazy. But not nah, but but talk about a couple of games in uh in college that uh that me and you both got off in the game. I know, I know, bro. I know, like, dang, I know you was going crazy, but dang, like, show you, like, what's up, bro? Hey, you nah, bro, me bro, bro, it's, been, it's been seven years. It's been set like seven years, bro. Well, I'm gonna say, man, I'm gonna say, me, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say one. My synergy account, man. Damn. I'm gonna say one out the top. We was in New York. We was playing against Villanova. Like me and you was going crazy that game. Really, oh, yeah, everybody was going crazy. Yeah. Everybody's going crazy. And then yeah, uh, you were stupid that game. I'm trying to figure out the game when you went crazy. Like it was. Was it Arkansas? That, freshman year, I always had a good game against Arkansas, but freshman year get LSU too, and I had 28. We wasn't there though. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look at you. You messy, bro. You a messy. No, I'm not. You're what you mean? I ain't said nothing. I ain't, I ain't said word. Broadcast. I ain't said word. So you trying but to not. See. So listen, this is the thing. This is the thing. I knew I knew a game you was trying to bring up because I knew that's the game you was killing. What you mean? Nah, nah. I wouldn't know. Oh, everything, bro. All everything I love, I would talk about that game. But the Arkansas games, too, I used to, I used to always go crazy. Because the games be up and down. We couldn't run no plays. So I, we just hoot. Yeah, so, you, you, know, was, you was going crazy. You know, Coach Grant wanted to go. On the road, though, too, is when I, I think you had a good game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Coach Grant wanted to go A to Z with plays offensively. But but go <laughs> every option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had so many sets. I know I just, I know I just got tired of running to that corner. Bro, you used to ask me like, bro, what what we doing right? Like, what what this play? I said, bro, you the PG all those. He said, bro, there's so many options. Like, I, I gotta remember everything. Yeah. What all y'all doing? We had more plays than 
than Tom Brady. <laughs> right. So uh so besides the Georgia game and of course, you know, all the big games you'd have had at Bama, uh, what was the most memorable moment at Bama that you could share with the people? The most memorable moment yeah. at Bama would probably be uh just for me. Yeah, just for you. I remember that game we played at UCLA. We lost, but I think you had a 30 ball. You had a 30 plus ball. And you you low key yeah. was like trying to show like you was mad, but you you know, you like you low key wasn't at the same time because you had got like 35, 38, something like that. But go ahead. I'm just throwing yeah. it. And I had my 21st, I had my 21st. Listen, this is the thing. I had my 21st birthday. Yeah. I fly back to Kansas City. Like we got snow around this time. So like yeah. it's a hard time. It's hard getting back, you know. Yeah, you know the camp. So I think he had set me out at the beginning of that game. Uh, he did. You know, he did. Good. That's a fact. I forgot about that. He did. Yeah, he did. And you went crazy. Like you just, yeah. I don't know. You went crazy. Yeah. Okay. But, but I, I just, I just felt like that. You know, if if you make a mistake like that, I mean, you gotta, you gotta be ready to come out, especially right. on that stage. Like, right. I wouldn't. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to go out like that. We, and we should have won that game too. Facts. But. Facts. Slow mo just went in his bag at one point. Uh, Kyle yeah. Anderson, it's crazy, yeah, bro. How he, slow yeah, that man is, but you cannot take that ball from him, or he go he go get to his spots too. It's crazy. Yeah, he yeah. been like that since like you was telling me. You was telling me about that because we watching film. I like, bro, this to do. You like, no, bro. <laughs> he been doing this since <laughs> since AAU days. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's see, that's one thing. That's one thing about people from Alabama though. Yeah. I just felt like that. They, I mean, you y'all played on a good AAU team, so y'all got to right, see yeah. a lot. We did, so, yeah. But I, I just feel like some people really didn't get it, get out the state right. when they had see somebody. They they like, especially if they showing highlights, they kind of took it like disrespectful. Right, yeah. I remember us playing against Marshawn Brooks mm. my freshman year, bro. He was a bucket, bro. Like, nah, he was a bucket. Hey, 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 tell that story, bro. Tell that story when he went crazy. What he had said to you? Let the people know what he said to you. <laughs> And you and you agreed too, but go ahead. Hey, to this day, I've never seen anyone. I've never watched anyone <laughs> in the scouting report and come out and do everything we watched in the scouting report. <laughs> and, and execute it and yeah. execute though. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I knew this. I know this crossover coming. Right. I know he want to play like Kobe. Right. That's exactly how you play. But everything they said he was gonna do, we knew it was coming, and, and he, he did still it. did it. But now, nah, but what he tell you? What he tell you though? What he tell you? He said, "I think y'all was at the line. I think somebody was at the line, and he said something to you, bro." I ain't gonna get. I ain't gonna say who he said it to. He didn't okay. say it to me. Cause I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I don't play. I don't play like that. <laughs> but nah, he. But no, seriously, like he looked at one of my teammates and was like, "Yo, I'm a dog." Yeah. I do. I like. I really do this. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And and I and I'm looking, waiting for us, you know. <laughs> hey, the next thing he shot them free throws, we went back the other way on the court. No, no words were exchanged. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bill really, Bill really was like that. He he he's one of the coldest yeah. scores I ever been on the court with. So yeah, he was a sure. bucket. He was a bucket. So yeah. but now, nah, man, but I be telling everybody uh like all the time. I said, man, I'll put you up against anybody as far as one of the top finishers like in traffic. And I know you got, I know you think you got bounce and stuff like that. You be trying to, you be saying like, stop playing your bounce. But as far as like under rim finishers, I say I put you up with anybody, but it's a story, man, that I don't, you don't even know about this. So you was at the LeBron James camp in, uh, in college, in school or whatever. And uh, when you came back, um, I was in the weight room working out with um, Andy at the time, but I seen you on the court. When you came back, it's like, I don't know. You just was different, bro. It's like a different type of like confidence. Like I don't know what it was, but when you was working out, bro, you was this was before like all the kids now they doing all these different finishes and stuff like that. Like you was doing that way back when, bro. And so yeah. in the workout, I was seeing you doing like all different type of spins on the glass, and you know you was using ear part of the backboard, and you doing it was just crazy just watching that. So talk about that as far as did you, did you see something as far as in that count when you went to um, to the LBJ count? And he's like, man, I need to start working on that. Or where did that come from? Because, like, man, you was – like, after that camp, I seen, like, you was doing all different type of finishes, like, before that. But the things, like, kids doing now, what everybody doing now, you was doing back then. So talk about that. 
Man, honestly, the finishing and all that, I feel like it got better when I got to Alabama because I got mm. stronger. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I was, I feel like a, when I was in high school, AAU and all that, I was yeah. doing finishes, avoiding contact, mm. you know? Yeah. Like I barely was at the free throw line because I'm avoiding them, but I'm still getting the, the bucket off. But right. I feel like going to, going to uh, college, I got stronger. Yeah. And it all started just watching. I remember we had our first night hoops. I mean, not night hoops, but pro in Kansas City. Okay. Yeah. And Chauncey Billups came out there. Okay. And I just kept seeing him like, yo, just just putting shit on the glass, like dude trying right. to block his shot. He's spinning it off like yeah. every angle. Like yeah. he was a big stocky guard too. You know right. what I'm saying? So I'm just looking at him and I'm like, yo, I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to you know, just try to like, I'll always do reverse layups. Like that was my yeah. thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Little. Yeah. So now, so now I'm seeing how he putting the, the English on there and he right. doing all that. So I just start working on it. Every day I go mm. to the gym, I'm just, even at, even outside, I'm just spinning the ball, just underneath, just spinning the ball, figuring mm. out, you know, I put it here. This, this what kind of result. Or, yeah. And it's, and it's different too throughout the game. Like, it's not like if I spin it here, it's going to go in every time. Right. Thanks. Like, Touching everything, but I just always worked on my touching. Mm. Like I said, when strength got involved, it just took it to another level. And like, right. I always watched the best finishers. I remember mm. being at NCAA first team and watching Kyrie. Yeah, yeah. And everybody at the camp, I swear, everybody at the camp, like, yo, this dude just flashy. This dude just got and one. Yeah, right. And I'm really seeing. I'm really just seeing the way he he finishing, taking the ball, like finger rolling, like yeah, doing, doing all this stuff that looked like and one to me. Mm, but like yeah, yeah it was just ahead of his time you know what i'm saying thanks yeah and if you know who his if you know who his godfather is rod strickland strickland one of the best oh pushers. my god yeah but like yeah so like now so now i'm getting into that and this is i ain't saying i'm looking at Kyrie and i'm going to look at rod strickland but now i'm in i'm in a room with people who know these guys and they see mm. their game is kind of well my game is similar to them Right. Like I'm just watching them, just just seeing how they just doing stuff in traffic and, and trying to find a way to add it, add it yeah. to my game. So, Man, so, I yeah. know it, it's been plenty of times in the games. I'm saying six ten, six eleven dudes, like they going off ones, like trying to swatch yourself, and you would just be doing it, it. It was crazy, bro. I'm like, man, how this dude just make this, bro? And even in practice, man, you would just be walking around and you just like you said, you always worked on it, like. Just walking, you will pick a ball up. Just walk past one of the uh, the side the side rims, and you would just spin it out the glass yeah. before you go into the weight room or something like that. Like you always like working on that. But uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it was crazy. But so we finna get into the the good stuff now. So don't be trying to be all yeah. you know politics, you know professional. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is this is me. This is they they about to get me now. Oh not this really. Is, oh not really. Okay, okay. Oh, nah, yeah, that that bag that one, that guy. <laughs> Give the people like some funny stories that that they can uh that they can laugh at. What's some of the funny memories you could think of off the top of your head? Without getting nobody in trouble, bro. Cause you know you be wilding sometimes. <laughs> the funny the funniest story? Yeah, give a couple funny stories that you can share with the people without, you know, getting no getting nobody in trouble, bro. You know, we grown out, we you know, married out here, you know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna tell you uh, so uh -oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first get to school, when I first get to school, I got to move into Bryant. Okay. And uh, and I'm the only freshman there, and it's just me. It's just me, Ben, and Tony, Tony okay. Mitchell. So you name your name. Nobody too. Go ahead. Okay. Name. Go ahead. <laughs> so like, so like we just, you know, I mean that that group, that group was uh, like just special, you know what I mean? Because like, right, flex. We really had to do everything. We did everything in the house. So like, mm. we just like come over play cards. Just like they just like old old heads kind of. Right, fact. But, That's a fact. Yeah, especially Tony Mitchell. We get out one night. T Mitch and uh, J Mike, J Mike Green. They old head. It's crazy. Play yeah. spades. Play spades all day. Facts. <laughs> Facts. And the Mike and the Mike Hard Lemonade. But we 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 gonna get we gonna get tired. But, <laughs> yeah. But, but nah, so like I, I'm I'm like, out with Ben, and I remember yeah. this my first night out. I'm like I ain't never like I've been to school up with my brother at KU when I with him a couple times. This is my first night on my own. I gotta make sure I get back to the house. Yeah, got my own spot. You know what I mean? So right. I'm 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 out with Ben. Mm. And ben, you know he I guess <laughs> got some at the got some at the spot. Ben, Ben, Ben. Yeah, go. Yeah. 
Yeah. We just getting some food. I just see Ben get out of the car. He like, yo, just just drive my car back to Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I don't even know how to get back to Brian. <laughs> Where y'all was at? Where y'all was at? Huh? Where y'all was at? Bro, his man, we drove the checkers. Bro, that's probably like every bit of like a five, 10 minute drive. Bro, I just got to campus. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know how to get back there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in a I'm in a car with him. He just gets out and get in the car with somebody else. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm in a drive through. How about getting the car? Bro, I swear I was driving for maybe 30 minutes trying to find Brian. Bro, I swear on everything. That's Ben, bro. He would do that. He was like, bro, just drive my car, bro. And what that, well, it was black on black. What's the, uh, what's the car he was driving? Can you remember? Uh, no, nah, I think this was before he got I, that one. Oh, uh, before he got that. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, yo, I don't know how I'm getting to Brian. Brian <laughs> drove around the whole <laughs> campus. Like, this is my first day. This is my first day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Yeah. I thought about just parking that thing and sleeping and just waking up the next day and seeing everything a lot more clear. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. But I thought you was gonna say one of the stories as far as like one of my birthdays too. But we go, we go leave that alone. We go leave that alone. We I was go. gonna get to that. I'm gonna tell that story actually. So okay, I know my <laughs> freshman initiation was like it wasn't like a thing they set up, but. I, I know I, I had some rough nights out with, 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 with some of those guys and like just not used to it. So I felt like it was just only right for me to do the same for y'all. Right. Yeah. But when it was when it was every one of y'all birthday, y'all knew who to call. Y'all knew who we right. Were going. That's a fact. You and Ben. <laughs> but you specifically. Yeah. I just happened to be in the, in the store that day, and the only thing they had was Smirnoff. <laughs> And, and I knew, I knew the night, I knew the night was gonna get yeah. tricky. I yeah. just didn't know when. Yeah. And this and young coop, y'all. This young coop, y'all. Right this young coop. This young coop. College days, you know, y'all. You know, there's no, no judge, judge free zone. So, but go ahead. They talking about. <laughs> they talking about. They talking about. Man, come get coop. Uh, he, he not. He he not doing too well. <laughs> I come down and I'm like, man, he just drunk. Just tell him to go to sleep, man. Wake yeah. up without tomorrow. I get down there. This man dry heat. <laughs> hey, we go. We go stop. We go stop. They didn't took. <laughs> they didn't took the mattress off the bed and put it right by the tw- like right outside in the uh, middle where he can just get just access to everything. Oh, uh, and I'm just saying <laughs> what I do, and then I go to one of the rooms. You got Roseanne. <laughs> And we got Roseanne in the other. <laughs> hey, 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 but look though, but look, man. Hey, shout out to my boy Lee, man. You was laughing, bro. But Lee, Lee had Lee had a bowl of water. Lee had me drinking water and everything, man. It was crazy, man. Yeah. But hey, we hey we got stories about you too now. This episode about you now, so we can talk about. Okay, yeah. Since you want to do that, let's so let's talk about. Okay, we finna get real good right now. We finna, get, we finna give it all up. So, one night we was out, okay, and then uh, you was in the training room. So, you in the hot tub, you trying to sweat everything. <laughs> you trying to sweat everything out. Every, everything <laughs> out. And so, and so, you had came out, and you had just threw up, like, just on the wall and everything. And you had said you had food poison. <laughs> I can't go ahead food for it. Let's get down to it. So I really did. I really did have food poisoning. I yeah. Really okay. Did have food okay. Poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really did have food poisoning because I threw up the night before. Yeah. It was New Year's Eve. It was New Year's Eve. Yeah. 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 And we we played, we played like we had a game like three or four days after that. Right. Bro, I really did. <laughs> And you just threw up yeah. all over the wall, man. That's all. So, guys, this dude is crazy. It's crazy, bro. I called my brother. I called my brother literally when I got back to the room. I said, "I have never seen anybody <laughs> throw up like." That. <laughs> hey, but look though. So I be I be talking about on a different episode as far as with preseason condition and people don't know like how real it gets, bro. They don't know how real it gets, dog. And uh, I know Lawson on one of the episodes. <laughs> He told his story, bro. He said, man, with Coach Lou, he knew Coach Lou. 
So he was like with Coach Lou, bro. He said after one of the uh after one of the days, he was saying that, you know, he thought he was gonna get, you know, some uh, you know, special treatment with him being a preferred walk on and stuff like that. So he's not no regular walk on. Yeah. He said, Man, Coach Lou took him through so much hell, bro. And he said, uh, yeah. he said he said he remembered this day like it was yesterday. He was sitting in the stairway, he called his pops, and he told his pop, he said, Man, I understand you want me to play at the University of Alabama. But I can go to another school. I can, you know, you don't have to pay for school and I can work a job. I don't think this for yeah. me. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Coach Lou had broke him like that, bro. And I, I know exactly where he come from. But give the people a preseason condition story that, that you can remember, that you can share with the people. Well, first off, I remember, I remember, like, <laughs> going into my first preseason. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't think it was possible to do I think we did twenty or twenty five. How many? How many suicides was it? Twenty suicides in twenty minutes. But the but the catch was we had to make it in like low thirty some seconds. And the rest of the minute we had to rest. And then when it, once it hit nineteen minutes, we had to run again, and we had to keep going like that. Yeah, my freshman year, I ain't even gonna lie. I I didn't think it was possible to to literally get through every suicide. Right. Facts. Yeah. But my second year, when y'all came in, I literally I think we just. I wasn't even sweating it at that point. It was just all mental. I, I feel like once you got to the mental part of it, because I went out the night before and Retton would tell you, like I literally get up the next morning, think yeah. I had food poisoning, think I had food poisoning again. <laughs> okay, food poisoning, I got you, food poisoning, right. Food poisoning, Yeah. threw up right before 6 a.m. workouts, and, and please don't think I'm bragging on this. It was yeah. just like, it happened. And I got to the running and I was just like, I ain't gonna make it. And soon that timer got on, it was just mental, like, yo, I'm about to get 20 of these because I ain't coming back. Right. Yeah, you so, got to come back that Nick that later on that day, which is crazy, bro. But also, man, yeah. uh, talk about the mild test with Coach Lou. Talk about that as far as you missing the time by a second and you had to do the yeah. whole thing over, bro. Like that hurt me when I heard that, bro. That had hurt. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like I was that was just like an example. Like yes, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, right. Like right. I didn't know that was gonna happen, but I was like, listen, if I if I even come one second close of this yeah. thing, I'm gonna have to do it again. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But, but see, yeah, I was just like, man, all right, I'll just come back and run it. I was pissed, but yeah, I just come right. back and run it. Yeah. Cause like Lou, that's my guy. He yeah. got me in the best shape of my life. But. That's my dog too. Even though me and him almost got the fight one time, but that's my dog though. That's my dog. That's my dog. Hey, you ain't want to see your coach Lou hands, bro. Man, stop it. He won't go. I don't bro. think. I don't he go. Bro, see stop coach it, bro. Lou this reach, dog. <laughs> this reach, bro. Stop it. But hey, look. <laughs> hey, so hey, man. So so talk about Alabama basketball. You know, right now, you know, with them. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go to that. Okay. We talk. We told everybody everybody's story. Why we can't talk about uh, <laughs> when we was when we was when we was getting ready for the mile. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And and we was in the football indoor facility. We just had to like you know, you just you just didn't want to run no more. I guess your <laughs> legs just they just stopped moving that day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, bro. I, mean, even... I want to go work at an industrial place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, even uh. Isaiah, bro, Isaiah, he was, man, Algie Key and Ricky Terry, man, they had told me, they said, man, they had to carry this man, like, literally carry this man, like, out the indoor facility, bro. Like, he couldn't move. And he was like, yeah. he was like, coach, my loins, my loins. He was trying to say my groin. <laughs> he couldn't talk yeah. right. He couldn't talk right. Yo, when I seen, when I seen Algie Key the first day, he had yeah. Lou. They had Lou for the first workout that day. He threw up. Yeah, it's I real, man. To the back there, I said, "Oh, shit, got real." Shit yeah, got real, right? yeah. <laughs> it's real, though. It's real, man. But yeah, but now, nah, man, I'd have had my day, man. Appreciate good day. I'm in that time one time. Coach Grant was over there. He got mad. This man swinging on the uh the football dummies, like he's swinging on them, talk, it going crazy because he pissed because like yeah. I ain't make the time. I ain't make the time. And he told you to come over there and talk to me because I'm already in my head now at this point. So I had walked over. You yeah. came over there. And you know, you trying to be a leader and stuff like that at the time. If bad, you care what I said, man. Hey, AT real, this ain't the time, bro. <laughs> this ain't the time. <laughs> but hey, nah, I appreciate it though. I didn't get it then, but I appreciate it now because I'm already mad. <laughs> Coach Lou messing with me, dog. Like he picking with me and it was working. And uh I ain't wanna hear that at the time though, but, but I, I mean I get it now. Like that's what you're supposed to do as a leader, you know, the leader of the team and stuff like that or whatever. But 
But yeah, man. So so let's talk about Bama basketball. You know everything they accomplished. You know they made it to the Sweet Sixteen uh, this year and they won the SC championship. So talk about that and also talk about Coach Oates. You know as a uh, as a coach for the as a coach and a leader for the team. And as far as how successful he'd have been so fast up until this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think they, you know, they're doing a good job, you know, with up at Bama right now. Right, those those right. guys is they bringing in, they bringing in the the next guy year after year right now. So like it, right. it's it's not no recruiting problems or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And also from a competitive side, two, and then in some positions three. So like when you get that, and then you just see how the culture changing with them. I mean success gonna come like they right. gonna keep winning because i mean culture there you know what i mean and and that, i feel like that's why like i mean our team i'm not asking for us to get a lot of credit but right you know we went through those days you know what i'm saying we we have built it up to there then it kind of dropped back off a year just i'm not saying due to right. recruiting or anything like that right but just to to have bodies in there yeah right? we had some guys but they got them they got them top to bottom they got right guys. yeah and when you do right. that yeah. It's just gonna create. It's gonna create that competitive practice, and then that mm-hmm. that competitive practice when you just figure out, you know, how to play his system, it's just gonna keep going up. I think so. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm definitely hype about that. And Facts. I'm glad I can brag now that I'm retired, so I can I can Facts. brag and on my on my mater, So right, and then on top of that, with them, like you're saying, uh, with the system that Coach Olsen put into place, and they playing at the biggest stage to attract more top recruits. Down the to be able to play in that yeah. system. Who wouldn't want to play in that system? Like he say, he want the guys to shoot within the first seven to ten seconds. I know a lot of coaches say that, but he really want you know his guys to do that. But uh, but yeah, man. So on all the episodes that I talk about, the the three main things I you know want to focus on is to entertain, inspire, and inform the people. So give the people some adversity that you had to overcome uh, that the people like don't know about. I mean, I, I would just say. I always just say, like, my adversity, like, you know, throughout college was just kind of, you know, being away from being away from the house, you right. know, and, and not being able to, you know, play in front of my, my family who, you know, what I'm saying I, I grew up, they were all at the AAU tournaments every weekend, all my right. A, I mean, high school games, stuff like that to, to transition to Bama. Right. And now I got to just figure out how to, you know, come every day and do my job of being away from being away from the family, you know, and mm. sacrificing it and doing what I got to do. Right. To, you know, put my put my life and career in the right in the right position, in the right path. So mm. I feel like that's just the biggest adversity being away from home, but you know, right. making the best of it, and, and, and you know, just like just grinding every day out was mm. was, was kind of what I learned from from going through that at Bama. It was like got, basically control what you can control in, in that sense. Like, Thanks. and then on top of that, that's just a key point too. Like. In order to be great and whatever you want to do, like you gotta sacrifice something. Like you can't have you can't have both. You gotta choose one or the other. So with you making that sacrifice, you know, going from, you know, Kansas down to Bama, and then of course with all the things you accomplished up until this point, like you made that sacrifice and it, you know, it worked out in your favor. But uh mm-hmm. so with you being, you know, you playing professionally, you know, six, seven years, uh, playing professional basketball, what advice would you give to a college guy that's going to be making the transition from college to being a pro? See, I, my thing is this is like for all those guys, like enjoy enjoy your time while you're in college. You know, if Facts. it's one year, two year, three year, four year, Facts. enjoy your time when you're in college because those days right there, you ain't gonna never get back never because get back. Facts. the next level ain't the professional level ain't it, it, it's nothing. It has nothing to do with with, with, with like college. It's a whole different ball game. Facts. You got you got you got like teammates. You know, what I'm saying they all count on you every day because that's how y'all you know feed y'all family. Right. So I just so I just say I'll just say like, you know, just get get into that get into that point and, and not selling it and not selling for overseas. You know, mm, a lot right, of those right. college kids now are seeing those guys come over here and they're like, All right, we uh if we if this don't work out in the in the States, we can go overseas. Right. And and my advice to them is just, you know, don't ever get don't ever get to that to that point because right. once you get comfortable and you just you know start being okay with with Plan B being an option, right. you know that's yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where it's gonna take a turn because for me it was like come, my junior year I could have left and went overseas, right? And you know I'm seeing like oh I can go and get this overseas, right? For, for one season, right? So I'm like, 
you know what I mean? It took my for a second, it took my mind off the main goal, which was always mm -hmm. playing the NBA. Right. Exactly. Now, I don't I mean a lot of people go overseas and make good careers and, and make a lot of money and be able to take care of their family, which is cool. But none of them would say, like, yo, this was my goal to go play basketball overseas. Right. Facts. Even though it can set you up right, it's just like I, I know what I was working for. And like right. now I know to use basketball and not let it use me. So I'm gonna go mm -hmm. overseas and play, you yeah. know, until I until I feel like I need to go and do something else. Is why I'm, it's which where I'm at right now. It's like mm -hmm. I don't want to just play the game and and, and just keep it going because you know it, yeah. it's comfortable and it's, it's something I, I know I can do overseas. So, Thanks. so any of those guys yeah. just keep the keep the NBA the main goal, but but also just use basketball. Don't let it use you. So Thanks. that's just my and I'm and I'm glad you said that, bro. So basically, what you're talking about, thinking long term and keeping the end in mind, because. When we were a kid playing the game, like we fell in love with the game, the main goal was to play in the NBA. And sometimes, yeah. like as we get older and stuff like that, like we see overseas, we see the like the type of checks we can get or whatever. Like we start focusing on that, but having that long term vision in mind, and and like you were saying, like you get over there, and sometimes you can end up just settling with that, and you just stay over there. Like you were saying, like people yeah. make a great career overseas and stuff like that, and they provide for they you know for themselves and their family, but. The main goal for all of us growing up was to make it to the NBA. Like, not really yeah. focus on that plan B, but focus on the plan A. But, uh, yeah. but so everything you accomplished, man, you know, being a Bama great, you know, it's going to be kids that's going to be watching this. Uh, what advice would you give to a, you know, a young Trevor Rutherford that's going to be watching this episode? I mean, I, I would just tell them, like, you know, this, like a couple people told me just coming up and before, you know, going to Alabama was like, listen, Every everything you do, you gotta go out there and compete, and you know, just be a dog. So like, my thing is for the the next guy who want to make it to college and and, and want to you know win state championship in high school, want to go play, you know, professionally. Like, man, right. just use take every day right now to put yourself in that position. So like, when mm -hmm. you grinding it, and some of your friends at, at parties in high school, prom or whatever it is, you know, right, they, they create memories as well. But just just know like, you got a bigger picture and like. You, you you got something like you gotta you you gotta sacrifice right now to, to get where you want to be, and and that's all I would tell them you know and build and build a lot of relationships you know what I mean like Thanks. Thanks. I stopped playing basketball and I have a million people who just want to help me out just because like right. I never crossed anyone you know what I mean I always I always was you know just humble and you know right. respectful and like now that I'm done playing basketball it's a million people want to help me out mm -hmm. just because Thanks. of that impression I left with them so like. Just always keep that in mind and going forward, like build relationships and, right. and and don't be, you know what I mean? Don't be afraid to get out your comfort zone and cause it's just that the relationships is gonna get with it's gonna get you in life. You right. know what I mean? Man, it's that's all great. about who you know. Right, facts. And then like I talk about that too, man. Like, you know, relationships is key. Cause relationships can get you indoors at them at that college degree college degree can't. So I mean, yeah, like you was talking about, man, you got millions of people trying to help you out. And I talk about that too. Like, don't just focus on, you know, of course you want to have a ton of vision, be locked in with, with you know, hoop and stuff like that. But make sure like these people that are trying to come up to you and be uh, trying to build that relationship with you that you don't be so closed in and you welcome them in because we have influence when we playing. Like everybody wants to, mm -hmm. you know, quote unquote, be like us or mimic their game after us or they want us to meet their kids and stuff like that. So constantly building a relationship while you're in school. And like you said, uh, use basketball. I don't let basketball use you. So, so now that you transitioning, you know, uh, now you in the you know real estate world. You know, being a realtor and and all the other things that you got going on. Uh, talk about what made you, you know, once again to the real estate space. I mean, real estate for me was like I always seen people growing up. Like my aunt, she was one of the you know most successful like realtors like in Kansas City, like Missouri area, and you know one of my okay, I know that. best That's friends. Right. Yeah, one of my best friends, his mom was also killing in real estate, you know? So, like, I right. always saw that kind of growing up and then just more so being overseas and all that time, you start listening to podcasts and, right. you know, just start hearing more about real estate, real estate investing. It just was right. kind of something I knew I wanted to get my license when I was done to, stay, you know, kind of have it. Right. And we more so do more real estate, like real estate investing. Mm. But, I mean, I've, I've enjoyed, you know, working at Hamner uh, and with, and with that uh group and um you know it's it's a it's a good experience i'm i'm still learning a lot but right. you know just seeing how that whole process of you know buying a house and 
and you know working with first time home buyers and and everything like it was always big to me cuz like my mom I, I think she may have owned probably probably owned one house or something right. and then just rent you know so like yeah. just for me to go out and help other people you know realize like you can there's ways for you to, to you know buy a house and mm. it's benefits with doing it it's right. kind of like my biggest thing cuz I, I see the like the look on people's faces like when they close or something like that yeah. and getting the house of their dreams and right and it's just it's just something cool to just to kind of bring awareness to and, and, and kind of help people out is why why i kind of chose that yeah that's dope man because i know uh i talk about also as far as with us, with us being athletes like we already had a blueprint as far as like the principle the core principle like as far as the transition from sports into whatever we want to do as far as starting our own business real estate whatever like as far as you know the discipline the work ethic you know being coachable mm-hmm. You know, being able to uh, work within the team, you know, and stuff like that. So we we got all we got all the traits. You know, being able to handle adversity, stuff like that. So all we have to do is take those, take those same core principles and apply it to a different game. But yeah, you know, sometimes we get boxed in and stuff like that. Think just hoop is all we can do. But but I want to change that narrative as far as like us being successful in multiple di- multiple different different areas and not just the sport that we playing. So uh, yeah, that's that's facts though, because like. If, if you look at if you look at at me and like when I say that to people they're like yeah you got four or five years left to play basketball yeah. and I'm like I can do that but if right. I ain't really into it if I ain't really that passionate like I used to be right you know what I mean why why waste time you know what I mean Thanks. I I know I know what I what I will set myself up in, and what kind of goals I got and I know that yeah it's gonna be a different you know different day to day with, with with doing real estate and, and right. you know this next journey in life but like right i'm built for it you know what i mean like right. basketball didn't prepare me for for this you know what i'm saying it's something totally new i'm learning right. but like for anything I'm getting it. Yeah. yeah i'm getting it you know what i mean and i feel like in four or five years like i'm gonna be somewhere better than where i where i thought i'd be if i was still playing basketball in the four or five years that's that's how Thanks. i'm approaching it so it's not like I'm sitting here worrying about dribbling the next time I drove basketball or something like that. So yeah, facts. All these kids just, just know that, like, it's, it's you can make money outside of dribbling that basketball. So. Right, facts. And I and I and when I start playing, when I well when I start playing too, I seen you can make the same type of same type of money and stuff like that in different spaces. Like I had no idea, but like you said, it's a lot. It's a lot of different avenues that you can look into that. And then especially in this day and time, man, with social media, like you you can build a business like doing anything now because because yeah. this because this phone but don't but don't but don't stop chasing your goals though yeah yeah that, like, i i i don't want people to be like oh he's just saying that because he's whooping now and i'm like nah right. like this is something i've been thinking about beforehand like, right facts yeah. i wasn't the guy like gonna play till i just can't play no more i was like yo i might stop at 30 regardless depending on don't no matter how i'm doing right just because right. i want to see something else in life instead of putting everything to there like it's more things i want to learn how to do around the house right. outside right. like you know what i mean like, right but nah it's just nah we just we just giving game to the people like as far as like yeah. whenever like either you retire or just say if an injury happened to where you can't play the game no more like just just know that you can do a lot more than oh i'm just a football player i'm just a basketball player i'm just a baseball player like there's a lot of things we can do we just gotta take those yeah. same principles and put it to a different game and figuring yeah. out what figuring out something we passionate about going back to what what made us happy when we was that five-year-old kid you feel me just trying to figure mm-hmm. out what different game we can play that put that smile on our face when we was like shooting that hoop or like count down five four yeah. three two one like stuff like that you feel me so but, yeah. uh, but dope man so give the people you know your social media handles and um also get on your content info if they want to you know partner with you and your team uh as far as in the real estate space yeah, I mean my my Twitter handle and everything the same T Rally Twelve and uh, okay. you know all all my information on there. Last time I put my number out, I mean you just getting all these scam calls. People saying <laughs> right, I need to right. you know, update my car insurance. Uh, yeah, crazy stuff. So, right, right. Hey, hit me on my hit me on my social media. Don't call <laughs> me with some scam <laughs> unless you want to sell your house. You want me to you know yeah yeah give me a call, but but don't be scamming me, please. <laughs> <laughs> dope bro dope so this is another episode of locker room talk with coop make sure you guys like comment 
share this video with somebody you think will enjoy it. And also, man, hit that red button, those red letters that say subscribe for your boy. And T Rez, man, I appreciate you for coming on. Man, no problem, bro, man. Keep going, man. Everybody supporting your show, and it's dope, bro. Keep going. Appreciate it, bro. Yep. Yeah.